As of August 1st, 2023, Microsoft has updated various aspects of its Power Platform licensing, something that is notoriously difficult to follow for the uninitiated. And the headline is that now various plans on the platform are called premium plans, but there are some other important changes under the hood too. In this video, I'm going to walk through these changes, but please be aware that licensing is a very complicated topic. So if you need specialist enterprise focused licensing advice, there are consultants out there that focus solely on the issue of Microsoft licensing. However, if you just need an overview and rundown, keep watching. So why does Power Platform licensing tend to be so complicated? Power Platform is an incredibly rich and powerful selection of tools, and in my mind is the best in class for what it does in terms of platform integration, ease of use, and capability. However, with great power, at Microsoft at least, comes great complexity. And instead of being something you just license, Power Platform is broken down into different product licenses, license tiers for certain products, and even add-ons that you apply either to users or to your whole organization. This can make licensing Power Platform complicated. And if you develop solutions without a good grasp of the licensing implications, it can become significantly more costly than might have been initially planned. If the content of this video is useful to you, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you'll know the next time I release one. Also, if content like this would be useful to people in your network, please consider sharing it there. Thanks. To some extent, what makes it more complicated is that certain capabilities of Power Platform are seeded as included features with most Microsoft 365 licenses. This means you get amazing value from those Microsoft 365 licenses if you make use of those Power Platform features, but it can also lead to complication when users start to step over the threshold of what they have included in their Microsoft 365 plan into something that requires additional licensing. Compounding this is the fact that instead of just being prevented from using features you haven't licensed, your end users will, in many cases at least, be presented with the option to trial whatever feature they are attempting to step into without truly understanding the potential cost implications of needing to apply that feature widely across an organization. Organization. I'm not really a big fan of this upselling to end users for the types of products that Microsoft sells. But there is a fine line here for a company like Microsoft to tread, as their tools do offer the potential of incredible business value, and allowing users to be hands-on with a product to demonstrate that value is a lot more healthy an approach than that taken by many enterprise software vendors who strictly guard any access to their tools until you've signed a contract with pricing ranging from that of a new car to that of a new house. What changes has Microsoft made to licensing from August 2023? For Power Apps, the only change is really that Power Apps Per User has been renamed Power Apps Premium. You can still buy per app or pay-as-you-go licenses, and you still will have Power Apps access seeded from within certain Dynamics 365 and Microsoft 365 licenses. For users needing to jump from the Power Apps capabilities attached to a Microsoft 365 license to a full Power Apps Premium license, that point has not changed. You can continue to use standard connectors in Power Apps with Microsoft 365, you can continue to use Dataverse for Teams, but as soon as you need premium connectors, including custom connectors or the full fat Dataverse experience, then you need to buy Power Apps Premium or one of the other licenses giving you that entitlement. It is interesting to note though that Microsoft is pushing an offer to incentivize bigger businesses to buy 2,000 or more seats of Power Apps Premium by offering a 40% discount off the normal $20 per user per month price. Their goal surely is to make Power Apps less niche in many organizations, and with tools like Natural Language to Apps or Excel to an app, both powered by AI, it's perhaps more realistic that these capabilities can be used in a way that returns value by a broader subset of team members than ever before. Now for Power Automate, there's a bigger package of changes. We also get a Power Automate Premium license, but this is not just a renaming of the previous Power Automate per user, but a fairly significant capacity upgrade. Essentially, they have turned the previous Power Automate per user with attended RPA plan, which was $40 per month, into the base Power Automate Premium plan and repriced it to $15 a month, as the previous basic Power Automate per user plan was priced. 
In addition to everything that was previously included with Power Automate per user with attended RPA, which was full access to Power Automate, creation of attended desktop flows, process advisor and AI builder credits, you also now get full access to the broader process mining suite of tools that enhances the previous process advisor offering. In comparison to the previous license tier, this is an amazing value and opens the door to types of process analysis and cross-product automations that some users may have been priced out of entirely previously. Additionally, we now have a new license, Power Automate Process. This is interesting as it's like Power Automate per flow licensing, but now at $150 per month, it's inclusive of unattended RPA. This does now make the license tier more capable, but if I recall correctly, it's more expensive. So depending on whether you need that unattended RPA capability or not, this may be a better value for you. The last big change is the addition of Power Automate Process Mining, which isn't to be confused with Power Automate Process or just the process mining capability already included in a few other licenses. Sometimes Microsoft isn't so good at distinct and clear naming. This license provides add-on capacity for the process mining capabilities in licenses like Power Automate Premium. It adds 100 gigabytes of data stored capacity per add-on for $5,000. For perspective, a single Power Automate Premium license adds just 50 megabytes of process mining data capacity. Now, as of the time of recording this, the previous license tiers such as Power Automate Per Flow are still available in my admin portal at the previous prices. But the license page on Microsoft Learn indicates that new sales of these are being deprecated. So I'm not sure how long they'll stick around. My understanding at present is that even really old license tiers such as the P1 licenses still remain active and grandfathered. So if you already have these tiers, it's unlikely you'll be pushed to a new one with a new price. There didn't appear to be any significant changes to either Power Virtual Agents or Power Pages licensing, but these are features I keep my eye on less than Power Apps or Power Automate, so drop a note down in the comments if there's something I'm missing. Now I know one of the things that causes most confusion for people is understanding why both separate Power Apps and Power Automate licenses might be needed, when on the surface at least they appear to give you similar capabilities like accessing premium connectors. So if you're working entirely in Power Apps, you can create Power Automate flows within the context of that app that can be run under your Power Apps Premium license. For example, instead of using a patch function to write something to Dataverse from Power Apps, you might run a Power Automate flow that adds some data to Dataverse instead. This sort of use is entirely covered in the Power Apps Premium license. But if you want to create a flow that adds a Teams message to Dataverse outside the context of an app, you would need both a Power Apps Premium and Power Automate Premium license to do both of these different things. Hopefully that clears up one of the common confusion points that come up with licensing between Power Apps and Power Automate. Overall, I'm excited by the moves Microsoft has made here, particularly as reflected by the pricing changes for Power Automate. We are starting to see Power Platform tools move from the niches to the mainstream. And this is really important for us to get from where we're at to an improved future of work. Imagine a workplace where using a combination of AI tools like Microsoft 365 Copilot and retooling or automation tools like Power Automate, workers are truly able to focus on outputs rather than focusing on the tedious detail of repeating processes day to day. It's been my view for a while that this is an important journey we're all on. Back when I started work, programs like Excel were already incredibly useful tools, but we were early enough into this journey that it was entirely normal for colleagues to simply dismiss these as being too complicated or just being something for techies. Now, that attitude still exists in some places, but having an ability to use spreadsheets in at least a basic way is pretty normalized and an essential feature of most office-based jobs. Today, it's still okay for a lot of workers to dismiss something like process automation tools as something that's either too complex or something that's really just for techies. But that is going to change and this technology is going to be normalized. And in five or 10 or 15 years time, the idea of an office worker who doesn't know how to automate their own processes might seem as weird as someone who doesn't know how to use a word processor today. 
This is going to be the next big leap in enhancing productivity, but also the next big leap in improving people's work lives. What do you think? Are these exciting changes or are they just more noise? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been a benefit to you. Until the next video, bye bye.